I want to talk about the digital age. And it's funny because I'm now 50 years old and I started with the digital age 25 years ago. There were no computers, personal ones, no internet, no smartphones, no tablets. But I am interested in three things. First of all, in creativity. And today we got the spirit and inspiration for all the people on the stage or, let's say, in this house again. Inspiration is the what we drive us. The next thing is the technology. I'm interested in new things. Let it say eco-technology or information technology. And the last point, that's my main point. I want to have a feel-good feeling for all of us. This means because my father was judge in Villa, and he, I asked him, what shall I do in the future? And he said to me, listen, son, only three things you have to do. First of all, don't talk too much. <laughs> yeah. Second, listen to other people and understand their meaning. They're not only the experts who show us the way, it's the normal human behavior. Listen and see what they are doing. Because sometimes, like Bodo, is not the speaker we expected before, but he doesn't need to speak. His soul, his heart, his work, is that what counts. And that's important for us. And last of all, that's a part of the fairness. We live, in, let's say, in a capitalistic system. We work for money. And that's very important because money sometimes takes the wrong road. And you, every one of you, has a choice in life. Do I work for money? but do I work for me, for my spirit, and for things I want to do. So I would like to ask you a question. Who is happy with the job he is doing, or she is doing? Please raise the hands up. Wow, that's not so bad. Okay, and now the other ones. Who is not happy, please stay up. <laughs> I don't believe you. Yeah, because the hands are up and nobody stands up. In my case, I want to ask you one question, please. It takes only uh, some seconds. I want you to fold the plane. You found this paper on your seat. There's instruction on it. You can use it or not. You can make your own design. Perhaps you're an expert in making the best plane you have ever developed. Okay. So, please follow the instructions. It's really easy. You just pick the paper. You fold it in the middle from one side and then you do it again, and then backwards, okay? Please do it. Everyone should have one. Yeah, that's great. Oh, yeah, great. You have to wait a little bit, okay? Okay. What's going on? Are you ready now? Oh, it looks good. Please show me the planes. Hands up is the planes, okay. On the count of three, you throw it to me or a person you want to send a message, okay? One, two, Three, let them fly. Woo! Yeah. Thanks a lot. That's great. Thank you for your, <laughs> for your cooperation. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's really. Stop, 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 stop. Okay. Um, you know, that's the analog system. That's a paper plane. Yeah. We are talking about the digital communication in the next few minutes. And now I have to tell you a secret. I, my colleagues, and our entire <laughs> industry, we are the devil. You know, a really devil. Yeah, because we make you do what we want you to do. We manipulate you for money. Yeah, we do it. And we have done it. So we succeed. And to be honest, 25 years ago, I was responsible for the company Siemens, for the Ars Electronica, and I met there a guy with the name Timothy Leary. And uh, he held a lecture in the Bruckner House. The Bruckner House was crowded. A lot of intelligent people were there. 
the Prime Minister from Austria, the Minister for Science, and all the other guys. <coughs> and he was talking about our information future. What will be shaping the future? What is the, what is the communication in the future? Which system will come? And he told us the story about servers be connected all around the world. We will send emails to each other. And what happened? What would you think? 1,500 experts and intellectuals laughed out loud. They couldn't believe it. But for me, it was a little bit interesting because the digital age was just around the corner. And they all haven't seen it. And so, that was for me, let's say, the tipping point in my career because I thought this digital age could be mine. It's really interesting to be here in Klagenfurt, one spot in the world, and we can reach all the people all over the globe. That's fantastic. And on the other hand, in this Ars Electronica stuff, I saw one thing, and that's you can't launch new ideas on old thinking. And that's what I have learned in this section of my life. If you talk about innovation, we shouldn't talk about experts or technologies. We should talk about you. Every one of you is an expert. Trust me, you can do it. Today it's a talk, but if you do it, it's reality. And I learned a lot of definitions about innovation in the technical field, in the communication field, in the advertising field. And it's really funny. Innovation never ever comes from the same road again. You have to take another road. In my case, it's the analog road I took before, and then I took the digital one, and that's the right one now for me. The next thing I want to stress, because when I was young, 25 years ago, this was my car. I went to former Eastern Germany, I bought this car, and they rebuilt it with this hands, not really talented one, so you can do it too. And my idea was, 25 years ago, I use old light cars and I rebuild them with an electronic machine. And it worked. So that was my photovoltaic system and my car. But what is the reason for showing that? That was the bad part of my life. This system never worked out. Nowadays, 25 years later, we see the new electric cars on the road, the Teslas, the IMPW. That's really funny. I was 25 years too early on the market. So my thought was, <laughs> I had a product, a system, that nobody was interested in. So I changed it. The next step was, I founded, let's say, a new company in the old one, and I focused on digital media, and you see, I was pretty young there, <laughs> and I was playing with the cat and the mouse, and this was my very first Mac I bought, and it is the year 93. 21 years ago, I offered Austria and all the companies in Austria new websites. <laughs> I went to my customers and I said to them, listen, don't print these folders, don't make these TV spots and the radio spots, come to me, I will bring you to the digital age. Come on, let's make internet. And they asked me, what's internet? <laughs> so, that was my very beginning, and I had to wait five years. And then a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, the market was coming. So what is the idea of that? Sometimes you have an idea, sometimes you're motivated, you're full of energy, like the young horses we heard in the morning, but there is no one who gives you money for your service. And what, is, what can I do, or what I have done? I just said, that's my road. I will stay on my road. The digital road is mine. And the things change. And nowadays, 25 years later, we are talking about to rethink media. And with rethinking media, we talk about advertising. And advertising in the 60s and 90s uh, the really bad ones. Only one-way communication, TV spots, radio spots, and so on. And we hammered the message home. Please buy this soup, please buy these jeans, and so on. And nowadays, 
I would like to mention Madman is dead. And what's the solution of it? Nowadays, if you put a product on the market, or if you launch a campaign, and something isn't really good in it, you get what? A shitstorm. You get feedback immediately, in real time, for sure. <laughs> yeah. If you look at Facebook, Twitter, and so on, the people have to say a lot to your product, if it's not perfect or your service. So you get feedback immediately. So my clients often ask me, sorry, we have a problem with your product and Facebook is full with it, what can we do? What is my answer? Change the product, for sure. And the next step is, lessons learned part two, the digital age changes everything is not true. It's you, that's the same thing. Sometimes I hear, I hear ah, this digital one is so stressing, it's not go 24-7 to being connected, and we work a lot, and the workload is great, and, you know, working time and leisure time is one time, and they want to enjoy and to have a break. If you have a smartphone, like this, do you have a smartphone? For sure. When was the last time you checked your emails today? Or yesterday? Today? Hands up? Okay. Was information in for you, which was good? You don't know. Yes? Okay. Okay. And the phone call. How many phone calls do you do a day? One? Two? Whenever you want. And now comes the question. Is it always useful? Do you think before you do it? No, you do it first and then you think it's not good. <laughs> yeah? So that's the reason you are the driving force, you are the innovator, you decide what you will do with your devices. That's the main reason to tell you that. And all the people now in the industry are saying to me, oh, there's a lot of information, there's a lot of communication, what shall I do? It's very simple, you decide. The next step is, we are talking about the advertising industry and we are talking about customer and clients. In former days, it was a very close relationship. Here is the product, here is the customer, bring them together. It's like Tom and Jerry. Sometimes they are playing games. Yeah? Uh, they are waiting for the customer and if the customer is in the shop, they catch him. Nowadays, it's quite different. We have these ants at work. What does this ants thing mean? Ants are really intelligent animals. If you put a bread in your garden, what will you see? A lot of ants without a written plan coordinating, collaborating together, and they succeed because they bring their bread to their, let's say, construction and they eat it. That's great. And it's the same now in the digital age. Because nowadays, in the internet, we cooperate, collaborate in real time, and it's very easy to do. But, and that's the next point, it now has to have an impact on your life 24 hours a day, and that's the pity. And that's your choice to do the right things at the right time you want. And the other thing is on a global scale, because we are talking about Thailand, we are talking about Zimbabwe, about the beautiful song, and what is now the really tipping point in the global scale in the thing? Now we are talking about people connected and being not connected. And as an ethicpreneur, what shall we do? Shall we connect all the people? I think no. If there are Indians in the forest, if there are any elephants, let's say, somewhere in the rainforest or wherever, we have to protect them. That's the only way to protect them. And that's pretty important. There has to be an offline world in the online world. Or some people like you, you hate all this stuff, but you're doing great stuff. And you use the internet to promote your things, because you're doing great walks. I saw it today. That's pretty good stuff. But on the other hand, it's your world. And you have to protect your world. And the digital world has one really thing we have to handle with. It's global, it's in real time, you can touch a lot of people, but you have the choice to do the right things. And the next point I want to stress is, if we work, you're all happy at work. <laughs> I can't believe it, because now there is this digital pressure we have in our job. 
I hope you feel it. I feel it. You say to me, you are happy. So I'm the loser, you're the winner. At the end of the day, if you go to a company right now, everyone is having a tablet, a smartphone, is connected, sending emails from the, let's say, from the holidays, because I'm so busy, the company needs me. But at the end of the day, we are talking about burnout, we are talking about the mass of work we have to handle. At the end of the day, I think, what is the reason for this digital pressure? Is it the connectivity? Is it really the information we need? Are we so busy? Or is it only the way we have, or the way we used to have? And my idea is about that, it's you. You have the choice, and the pressure isn't only the pressure of your company, it's the pressure for sure you make yourself. On the other hand, we all know this man looking at the mirror. He is, I think, working in the United States and doing an interesting job. And that's the mirror you should use every day for yourself. Because nowadays, the possibilities in the digital area and the world are really great. And this man knows that. And in this situation, he isn't looking in the mirror to think, I'm great, I'm number one in the world, I can change the world whenever I want. He is thinking about, I'm right, doing my best, do the best for the planet. And that's the reason for you to check not only your, let's say, your fashion, to check your inspiration and the way you want to go. The last thing I want to stress is this big data issue, but only in a short way. We heard today about this big data thing, about data are important, data are performance in the internet and in the advertising industry, data are crazy because we know everything about you, because we can buy all the information we need to, let's say, penetrate you. So please use all these things, let's say, in the privacy mode. Please do it in the right way. On the other hand, privacy, it's often a very hard topic to tell, because five internet giants know more than you about yourself. And so, lessons learned part three, 25 years later. For me, it's net on, tune in, feel good. If you want to enjoy the net, you can enjoy the net, and please use the net. And at the end of it, I wanted to say you one funny thing. 90% of our information we exchange is exactly useless. So, please pick up the plane again, do something crazy. Yeah, come on. Yeah, and one, two, three, and again, please blow the plane. Yeah. Thank you for your 90% useless information. Thank you. <laughs>